You know, there's always one bit going, I've lost a toenail. That's the latest news. A toenail came off. It looked like the front part of my toe had come off. So I've got this toe with, you know, where your toenail is. There's a gap there and it's waiting for the new toenail. It's like it, it's already carved out the shape, which is really weird that the toe knows a nail's going to come. So it's got like the bed, you know, like imagine you dig, you dig a swimming pool. Yeah. Uh, and that shape, so that, if you imagine that's a nail shape, I've got the nail shape already in the skin underneath and the top nails come off and there's no nail there. But when you're putting your body through what you regularly seem to put your body through, is it going to have any energy to dedicate to growing a new toenail or is he just going to say, no, I'll deal with that in a bit when he's... Finished? Yeah, I think it does that on Monday. It's already, I think it's saying on Monday when I stop, it's going to start growing a toenail. But, uh, but it is weird, I'm stronger, the body is stronger than when I started. Are we allowed to talk about, I don't want to talk directly about running, I want to take your mind off what you're doing, but the superhuman aspect to what you do, because I am intrigued by that. Why are you able to run marathons day after day, double marathons, when most of us can't? What is it, is it mine? Well, you know, think about where you are in your life, what you do on television, presenting, doing the things, you must love what you do. Yeah. And you know kids at school, and if you'd said to them what you do now, they'd say, no, that's not, not going to happen. But in your head, you decided, you were motivated, you saw a way, and that's the thing. I can artificially, curiously, I can artificially motivate myself to do things like this. And it comes from, and I've said this before, it sounds a bit, it can sound a bit bonkers, but I came out, trans, TV, whatever it was, the language has changed over the years, but that was in 85. And I don't know how old you are, but I was 23 at that time. It was very, considered very toxic. If you said you were TV trans, transvestite, whoa, you're not, a, you're not really a member of society, are you? You're an other, you're a wrong person. And so all the psychological strength I had to do to, you know, people would insult you with barrages of insults in the streets. It's not just one word. They just stand there hurling at you. And so I would hurl it back. This is what sometimes happens, occasionally now, from time to time. Someone will start unloading abuse at me and I just unload it back at them. And there's two people going, fuck you fucking, I don't fucking. So I learned to do that and fight people in the streets. But once you've gone through all of that stuff and gone to a better place, 85, 90, 95, all of them, 20, 21, and anything else you do after that that's tricky, doesn't seem so hard. And also I can set up, because I didn't have to come out at that point. You know, I do fancy women, so now I'm essentially um, a, a lesbian, and, and I'm cool about that, I'm great about that. I don't know if lesbian women are happy with me saying that, but anyway, that's kind of how I feel. And um, I feel if I'm going to do gigs in different languages, which I do, if I'm going to run a whole bunch of marathons, which I do, that I don't have to do that, but it seems a positive thing to do. So I decide that I will do it, tell everyone you're going to do it, that's the key thing, and then put a date in the diary, maybe get some cameras on it, and then you have to do it. It's too embarrassing to back out. I'm only here because it's too, 